Welcome to the talk news from the corporate land um, at this year's All System Go. Um, first question, who of you um, uses Corboot already? Okay, that's, uh, I think we're three hands, so <laughs> not, not four, so it, it could be more people. So um, those of you who have been in the talk before, um, that was like heaven because um, the speaker said on this STM device, if you set a pin, um, or reset a jumper, then the bootlock is uh, disabled and all your code is um, executed and you have the full control of the device. And um, this proprietary firmware and today's devices, um, this is uh, very hard for uh, consumer devices. And um, yeah, that's why I think core boot is um, quite important. Um, just a few words um, to myself. Um, um, yeah, I studied math here in Berlin and I like free software and um, I'm active in Core Boot since uh, 2005, but um, yeah, I'm mainly a user but also um, support the community a little bit. All right, so what happened? Um, a long time ago in um, July this year, um, um, the commit which you see there was tagged as um, release um, 4.10. And yeah, it was actually like two months late. I'd say um, Corbett, the Corbett project tries to release, um, uh, do, a, do a release every six months. And, but it's uh, just like a, a, a checkpoint in the commit history. It um, doesn't um, give um, yeah, any guarantees, let's say. It's, um, of course, there are um, some things are tested beforehand, but it's yeah, just a commit which is named uh, with a number. Um, um, some stats. Um, so there are actually quite a lot of authors, uh, commit authors, like almost 200. Um, yeah, there were a lot of changes and um, yeah, also quite a lot of new contributors. Um, yeah, 11,000 lines of course codes were added and um, 5,000 lines of comments. Um, because of the time, I just will be uh, touching um, some small topics and um, the first one is um, the C environment boot block. Um, there was an old way to um, boot or to build a core boot for devices um, and that was related to um, how um, um, the older processors um, were laid out that there were not a lot of um, uh, second level cache for example and um, uh, or level one cache, and um, that GCC also was not able to build um, the boot block. And um, that's why, like in the early 2000s, Eric Biederman, he wrote a separate compiler for um, Core Boot, which um, built the boot block in the beginning. Um, so, and then people said, okay, with new processors and GCC evolved, um, we, can actu we actually want to use GCC because ROM um, CC had um, several um, um, disadvantages and some constructs were not supported and um, yeah, GCC is much more well tested, uh, of course. And so, um, Alexandru Ganyuk, um, he started to um, um, to, to change um, the environment um, by allowing the boot block to be um, to, to run a C environment when, and the boot, where the boot block gets built with uh, uh, the rest with um, GCC. So that's a modern way um, to boot and so it's a um, big task to um, convert the current boards maybe to this um, new method and um, for example for ARM um, which came to uh, core boot much later as a support, um, that was already possible. So that's uh, mainly a big task for x86. So yeah, just it, it won't be as technical as in the talk before, but um, that you just see some, uh, that you know where to look um, if you're interested. So there's this, um, yeah, more or less assembler um, thing, um, code, which sets up um, the device in the beginning so it can run in the end the, um, yeah, um, the, the boot block. So it jumps to boot, boot block um, pre-C entry after it um, goes um, 
um, yeah, after it sets up the processor this way in these include files and for example in, uh, for QEMU where it's not a hard problem to set up RAM, um, it then calls um, bootblock C and FreePist. So several, as I said, several boards were converted and these were mainly um, interships and um, yeah, that's um, so much. And that's a big task now because um, I will come to it later. It's a hard requirement for the future. Um, yeah, regarding what, there were a lot of new boards also added. Um, Google does a lot of um, Chromebook um, um, developments and releases new um, versions for this, of course. But um, there's also now a quite current server board um, supported. Um, I think, um, this is um, Haswell, the Supermicro X10 SLM Plus F, and also because um, it's kind of similar uh, after this, um, oh sorry, after the 4.10 release, the Supermicro X11 was, um, was um, released, which is a Kaby Lake server board. So, of course, it's now again a hard um, decision um, because AMD released um, Epix and so on. So nobody wants Intel anymore, but you don't get core boot with uh, Epic. So as always, it's a complicated word, world. Um, yeah, for system on chips, um, AMD Picasso um, was added, um, which is going to be used in Chromebooks and also an ARM Qualcomm processor. And I just wanted to go into um, AMD a little bit. Um, as with the Intel Management Engine, they also have a platform security processor, which is an auxiliary processor. I think it's an ARM chip. And yeah, it's um, actually quite powerful. And um, before the actual um, processor is taken out of reset, um, um, it, it, it does a lot of thing, things. And it's, I think it's been there for like seven or eight years. But now it also happens that for future AMD systems, this um, this um, platform security processor will, for example, also initialize um, the memory, yeah, which is kind of um, a, a new thing. Um, uh, it, it has a little bit to do with how AMD probably um, positions itself in the future, also with ARM devices and so on, so that they um, take the devices more apart. But that also um, is quite new. So. Um, that the RAM initialization is not run on the main processor. So that's kind of new, and that also yeah, gives some... Um, the Corbett project now also has to think about how to adapt to this, um, because um, yeah, um, you don't run, you don't start from flash, but you start from DRAM, for example. Yeah? So some things, components have to be adapted. And um, yeah, and that's also quite of hard. Uh, I mean, I come to this in the blob section later, but um, RAM initialization is quite complex. So it's on the one hand, um, yeah, only the vendor more or less knows how, how, how to do it. But on the other hand, also to fix bugs and so on. And in the spirit of free software, actually, it's, um, the corporate project actually wants to have a, um, also the code for how to initialize the RAM. So, yeah, it's, and it's a new problem and because um, now we more or less would also need to somehow write the firmware for the PSP, but of course it's signed and so on. Yeah, so that's for that. Um, we will see how it um, works, um, but I come to this later. Um, there were also some devices removed because um, certain requirements which we set for boards or standards were not um, met, and that's a GO LX. I think it's now 15 years old or so. It was an old AMD processor, which actually had a, its own kind of architecture, but I think it could emulate x86. So it was quite interested, interesting, and it was also supported by Coreboot and um, quite popular in routers or embedded boards. Um, one example is the PC Engine's Alex boards, which were used for routers, for example. Um, this year we had um, three um, Google Summer of Code projects. Um, so 
thank you Google for that. Um, so a lot of Coverity, um, so Coboot is integrated in Coverity, in this static analyzer from some US university or so, it's our company. And they, um, yeah, so one project tried to fix all these um, Coverity bugs. Um, then, um, yeah, the QEMU ARM64 um, support um, port um, um, to, to create this um, was one project. And the JITRA um, is a program from the NSA, I think, which they, um, um, which is kind of like an um, nah, IDA Pro certain disassembler um, project. Um, and one student worked on adding support um, first for core boot images, of course, but it's on the one hand not so interesting because we have a lot of source for that, but um, also to add a little bit support that you um, can load UEFI images, I think, and then be able more or less to reverse engineer this. Um, yeah. So the next release um, for 11 is planned for October, but as I said, um, the only reason, uh, important stuff is more or less it's a, just a tag and afterwards a certain criteria or truncation which were um, announced um, at least six months earlier are applied. So these are the new criterions. Um, as I said, all boards have to support the environment boot block and um, yeah, um, the car global migration and so car um, is caches RAM and um, the variable builds which are stored in there needs to be um, moved to the next stages and um, so you can for example use timestamps which you measure in um, the ROM stage um, can also be um, um, moved or seen in, um, in the ROM stage and later on you can read them out. Um, yeah, so um, maybe I forgot to say, for example, for C environment boot block, this of course gives gives a little bit um, gives a lot of advantages. For example, all this stuff which Google does with uh, verified boot, um, they have their own verified boot implementation, vBoot too, and so they measure certain uh, or they make hash sums of certain parts and to verify that um, these the stuff has hasn't been altered and this is um, for example just possible for C environment boot block and so all po boards which support this um, would automatically profit um, from the other um, infrastructure uh, so that's yeah quite nice but um, the downside is for example the current server board which is also already seven eight years old, but which is the most powerful x86 boards um, currently available in core boot without any blobs um, besides uh, microcode. Um, that's the Asus KGPE D16 and um, this in the current situation it will, will be dropped. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so also what happened there is now more or less an established conference for firmware development. It's the open source firmware conference and it um, took place in um, this year in California at the Google and Facebook campus um, near um, uh, San Francisco and San Jose, so um, Sunny Valley I think or Sunny Vale. Um, and um, last year it happened in Bonn, so it was in Europe, and then hope next year it will be again in, um, in, uh, in Europe. And um, yeah, it's quite established now because um, um, Philip Deppen Wiese, Wiese um, Saulin, his nickname, um, from Nine Elements, he is quite um, 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 communicative and um, motivated, and he gets a lot of projects together, and so that's quite cool to have um, also like officer projects um, to, um, come together and to talk about um, um, roadmaps and um, goals. And um, for example, Core Boot, Linux Boot, Tiana Core, OpenBMC, U Boot, PT Boot, which is a boot um, program for um, power PCs. Um, and for example, the firmware update um, project was also there, which is Richard Hughes, um, which um, on current laptops or devices lets you update your UFI firmware with a 
UEFI capsule technique just from the Linux user space, um, which is a cool thing. Um, they were all there and um, they cooperate now. And um, the talks were recorded, so, uh, but not published yet, so I'm looking forward to them because I, um, uh, I, I wasn't able to go to the US. Um, yeah, on the mailing list it was announced that for this server board, if um, people are interested to keep support, um, that the community can um, raise funds and the 3Mbit company, which is in Poland, um, um, would be willing to maintain the support. Um, so, yeah. Some ongoing work, um, um, uh, which is happening. Um, there's a new MediaTek chip, which is also something to look for because they get more powerful and get even more viable alternatives for x86, um, which is always good to have. Then some um, person started to work on um, a core boot port um, for PowerPC 64, um, which you might have heard, um, which currently uses host boot, chi boot, and petite boot. And um, these are currently used, for example, um, of course, on servers, but they are also now workstation boards from uh, Raptor Engineering. Um, the Talos and Blackbird, you might have heard of it. So it's a yeah, um, desktop workstation board um, um, which you can get. And um, currently on power, also you heard that the ISA is now um, put under free license and the Power Foundation. Open Power Foundation is now part of the Linux Foundation, so it's actually quite open now and um, also a good alternative and hopefully it would put some pressure on um, the x86 people. Yeah, RISC-V is still also supported, some people work on this, so they are quite disappointed that there also is now a system management mode in RISC-V and yeah, the integration of the AMD PSP processor is quite uh, a challenge. Also. Yeah, with binary blobs, um, let's say, uh, if, oh, I'll come to it later. So, um, the result of the Open Firmware Conference is that now people also work on the FW um, Firmware Update Utility Integration. Um, this is not directly related to core boot, but to firmware in general. KXEC is now able to boot Microsoft Windows. There is a G, um, Google Summer of Code project was there, which is um, very nice. Um, it is clear Linux, um, they work on um, booting quickly. Um, they got a kernel now, and on the Linux Plumbers conference, they talked about um, 300 milliseconds um, kernel execution time, um, which is nice to have. Um, of course, they also need a fast firmware, because even if your Linux system, your Linux system boots in one second, and the, your firmware, like on my Dell, boots in 10 seconds, then that's... Uh, yeah, not good. Um, so I hope that they um, will get a lot of stuff upstream and all people will profit from it. And there's also now a firmware project which is called Orboot, which is um, a firmware implementation in Rust, and they have a goal that they don't allow any binary blobs. So um, to the end, um, I want to talk about some ongoing issues like um, blobs. So. It causes a lot of hassle um, and actually work, which actually would be better to put into working, board, um, working code instead of thinking about glue codes or wonder why this blob doesn't do as uh, what you expect. And so there's a lot of time kind of wasted, I think. Um, a lot of stuff gets a little bit better because now the uh, binaries which are published are better documented and um, the ABI is not broken that often and so on. Um, but it also causes some licens licensing issues. Yeah? Corbett is GPL, so if the platform initialization code binary calls back into Corbett, is it a violation, is it not? So um, current state is it's not, but um, it's issues you actually don't want to deal with, right? So uh, we will see how this will um, develop. Um, yeah, there's, for example, early on AMD, um, they contributed um, documentation for Epic and so on, the 
um, BIOS kernel developer guides, they have not been published to my knowledge or as, are not as complete, so you cannot actually implement um, a free firmware. Changes, of course, are hard to review if you don't have the documentation and um, you cannot write code. Yeah, and then, of course, there's uh, yeah, normal community issues um, that um, are in all other projects also. Um, also, the problems which you have in the Linux kernel, like a lot of developers are not employed in companies and work on new products, and they uh, often cannot share that they work on the new products um, because they, um, of NDA, they cannot release it. And so they implement something, and then when they are allowed to push it upstream, the community has a lot of, um, um, sometimes a lot of complaints and want to something to be rewritten. So in a lot of often um, we would like to have these company developers engage with the public community um, more often and write to the mailing list, for example, to discuss certain architectural decisions. Um, yeah, but that's also sometimes um, the same with Linux um, drivers. So, yeah, I'm at the end, just as a quick note, um, because today was a climate strike and so on, and also Leonard's talk with um, the home directory and the problems with suspend to RUM. Um, I advocate again, I, I don't like suspend to RUM if um, firmware would be possible. If your system would cold boot in like one second, nobody would need to suspend to RUM, yeah? And you would find other solutions to preserve the state. You wouldn't have to worry about what is in the, um, in the RAM and you would use the normal mechanisms. You would reduce comp complexity. Yeah, and the core boot is always um, still needed, like on this laptop um, um, with the p-store mechanism where you can store crash dumps and UEFI variables. For example, if I just found out that it was enabled and then it was uh, all these variables was ri were written and I was wondering why my system now, the firmware took 25 seconds instead of 10 seconds to boot. And it was because all these variables were there and there is a bug in the Dell firmware that it reads all these variables um, without any need. Okay, so that's um, the end. Um, thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, um, go ahead. You mentioned the uh, boot on ARM systems a bit. Can you expand a little bit on what sort of devices you've been targeting? Has it been single board computers? Has it been servers? There's really nothing in the middle. Um, I think both. So mainly the Chromebooks, um, which are like laptop devices, so embedded stuff. But I think there is, was this um, KVM um, um, thing. Yeah, Thunder, Thunder X2 X. or yeah. Thunder X1? I think two. Two, okay. Um, but um, there were some problems with Kevium because of the ARM trusted firmware releases and they didn't maintain it. So I think they removed the board now, but there was support and I think Facebook even sponsored the Nine Elements company to do the support. But um, I, I, you can come afterwards and I can look it up. Yeah. Do you know why support for the Alex board was removed? Yeah, because um, nobody worked on, I, I need to look up um, which um, special requirement was there, um, but it was, I think, um, also had to do with car migration. So you actually couldn't see the timestamps from the boot block, and I have to look up what requirement it was. But um, yeah, nobody maintained it. Um, but that's of course also a valid um, question. I mean, the firmware still worked, right? And you can still check it out and build it. But of course you don't have all the new features. But at a certain point, I think it's a valid question if there are no maintainers, um, if you can remove these boards and you can of course still boot the old firmware, right? But um, sorry, I, I don't know the specific reason. I can look up the commit and tell you. Okay, uh, thank you Paul, yeah. again. Thank you.